Let's look at the difference between balancing and closing a ledger. So looking at the balance sheet, you can see it says uh, the balance sheet is prepared as at, in this case, the 30th of June, whereas the income statement is for the month ended 30th of June. So there's a slight difference there. So we want to figure out what that difference is and what it's got to do with balancing and closing. So best way to look at that is over time. So let's say these are years or months, it doesn't really matter, but there's a balance sheet for one period. It doesn't end, it keeps going. It actually exists as at a certain point in time. It's perpetual, it keeps on going forever. That's a little bit different to the income statement. The income statement's prepared every period. So there'll be a, an income statement for period one, there'll be an income statement for period two, an income statement for period three and so on. Uh, in contrast, the balance sheet, there's only ever one. There's only ever one and it's prepared as at a certain date. So they're different. And that sort of lends a difference between balancing and closing ledgers. So far, we've been doing this. We've been balancing everything. So take an asset, for example, cash or bank. We balance that out and carry the balance forward on the 1st of July. For a liability, in this case, creditors control, we balance that out and carry the balance forward on the 1st of July. Owner's equity, balance it out, carry it forward on the 1st of July. Revenues, balance it out, carry it forward on the 1st of July, and expenses, balance it out and carry it forward on the 1st of July. So that's what we've been doing. What we want to look at is, is that correct or should we be doing something else? Um, and that sort of affected our trial balance. So we've been getting these really big trial balances like the one on the screen. And you can see it's got every type of account in it. It's got some assets, some expenses, uh, owner's equity accounts, some liabilities and some revenues. And what we've been doing is using this info to go and make a balance sheet. So taking the assets, the liabilities, and the owner's equity accounts, and then making an income statement by taking the revenues and the expenses. Balancing all accounts, however, at the end of the period is actually wrong. So for an asset, that's actually the correct thing to do. So we're gonna keep doing what we've been doing with an asset. But looking at that revenue account, for example, that's wrong. We're actually not going to balance that ledger anymore. And the reason why, that's something we need to talk about. And that's all back to do with this as at and for the month ended concept. So a balance sheet assumes the business will exist forever. That goes back to our going concern principle. And it represents a snapshot or a photo of the firm's financial position at any point in time. And for example, we might prepare a balance sheet as at the 30th of uh, June 2015. So that's it prepared there. A month later, we prepare another one and another one and another one and so on. It's not specific to any period. It's just the current balance sheet at that point in time. That's different to an income statement. An income statement relates to one period only. So in this case, a month. And what that measures is financial performance. And for example, what we're trying to figure out is what was our profit during, say, June? What was our profit during July? What was our profit during August? And so on. So where that's a little bit different is look at a asset, in this case, cash at bank. So that'd go on a balance sheet. So we balance that out and we say at the 1st of July, the balance is 12,000. Uh, that's the balance there. So what will happen is that balance will continue into the future. That $12,000 sits in the bank account. It exists and it can be accessed in July, August, September and so on. That balance exists and continues into the future. Take sales, for example, though. So you can see that we've got the sales for June up the top here. That would go in the income statement. What it wouldn't do, um, or those $53,000 of sales, they relate to June specifically. What they wouldn't do is they wouldn't go into July. Those sales aren't relevant to July, August, September or so on. They're only relevant to June. So why should we carry that balance forward? It doesn't make any sense. So doing that is wrong. Going into July, sales aren't 53,000. They'll be a different amount. So from now on, we're not going to balance revenue or expense accounts. What we'll do instead is have a new ledger for each month. So July will have a separate sales ledger. August will have its own sales ledger, September will have its own sales ledger, and so on. And that's because they're not related to each other. Relevant says that they're separate periods, so they're not uh, August sales aren't applicable to July, September's aren't applicable to August, and so on. 
That leads us to the fundamental question, what's balancing and what's closing? So balancing is where we balance the account at the end of the period to carry it forward into next period. So taking cash at bank, we balance that out on the 30th of the 6th and carry that forward on the first period of the next month. So we're going to do that for assets, liabilities and owner's equity accounts. That's different to closing. That's where the balance of the account is reset to zero at the end of the period. So take sales, for example, it's got a credit balance of 53,000. We need to reset that to zero. So to do that, we'd actually need to make a debit there and that would reset it to zero. So for next period, it's actually blank. And we're going to do that for all revenues, expenses and the drawings account. The difference between balancing and closing, let's look at cash at bank. So that's been balanced at the end of June. That just shifts forward in time like so. Looking at the cash at bank, so see we've carried the balance forward on the 1st of the 7th. And then in the start at the start of July, it just looks like that. You can just see the opening balance like so. Looking at the sales ledger, there were $53,000 of sales in June when we reset that to zero. So we don't actually carry that forward to July. What it'll look like in July instead is it'll be blank because we've closed it and reset the balance to zero.